What? Do you realize how unacceptable this is? Fascinating. Why? Okay, I'm sure you're just doing your job, but could you not come a wee bit sooner? Six months I've been here, living off star peak protein nibs and the promise of a good meal. And I know exactly what's going on here, okay? Punishment, isn't it? Ongoing. For something that was clearly an accident. You are Montgomery Scott. You know him. Hey, that's me. You're in the right place. Unless there's another hard-working, equally starved staff the officer around? Me. Get to shut up! You don't eat anything. You can eat like a bean, and you're done. I'm talking about food. Real food. But you're here now, so thank you. Where is it? You are, in fact, the Mr. Scott who postulated the theory of transwar beaming. That's what I'm talking about. How do you think I wound up here? I had a little debate with my instructor on the issue of relativistic physics and how it pertains to subspace travel. He seemed to think that the range of transporting something like a, like a grapefruit was limited to about 100 miles. I told him that I could not only beam a grapefruit from one planet to the adjacent planet in the same system, which is easy, by the way, I could do it with a life form. So, I tested it on Admiral Archer's prize beagle. Well, I know that, Doc. What happened to it? I'll tell you when it reappears. <clears throat> I don't know. I do feel guilty about that. What if I told you that your transwarp theory was correct? that it is indeed possible to beam onto a ship that is traveling at warp speed. I think if, if that equation had been discovered, I'd have heard about it. The reason you haven't heard of it, Mr. Scott, is because you haven't discovered it yet. <laughs> what, it, are you from the future? Yeah, he is. I'm not. Well, that's brilliant. Do they still have sandwiches there? Well, she's a wee bit dodgy. She'll do it as her totally banjaxed, as well as a few other things. On you go. So, the Enterprise has had its maiden voyage, has it? She is one well-endowed lady. I'd like to get my hands on her ample nacelles of your pardon me, engineering parlance. Except, the thing is, even if I believed you, right, where you're from, what I've done, which I don't, by the way, you're still talking about beaming aboard the Enterprise while she's traveling faster than light without a proper receiving pad. Get off there! It's not a climbing frame. The notion of transwarp beaming is like trying to hit a bullet with a smaller bullet whilst wearing a blindfold, riding a horse. What's that? Your equation for achieving trans-warp beaming. Get out of it. <laughs> Imagine that. It never occurred to me to think of space as the thing that was moving. You're coming with us, right? No, Jim. That is not my destiny. Your destiny? The other Spock is not going to believe you. Only you can explain Under what the hell's no happening. Under no circumstances can he be made aware of my existence. You must promise me this. You're telling me I, I, I can't tell you that I'm following your own orders? Why not? What happens? Jim, this is one rule you cannot break. To stop Nero, you alone must take command of your ship. How? Over your dead body? Preferably not. However, there is Starfleet Regulation 619. 619 states that any command officer who is emotionally compromised by the mission at hand must resign, said command. So you, you, you're saying that I have to emotionally compromise you guys? Jim, I just lost my planet. I can tell you, I am emotionally compromised. What you must do is get me to show it. I then, laddie, live or die, let's get this over with. Come with me, go on. Coming back in time, changing history, it's cheating. A trick I learned from an old friend. Live long and prosper.
mostra. Release valve. Activate. 